I met a gypsy. So with the triple flip itself, how long did that take to land? And like, what was, I guess, talk me through the process of the triple flip. Yeah, sure. Um, so it was late 2014 um, when Travis first invited Tom Bajez and myself over to, to trial this airbag and a new ramp. And I think not long before that, he had, he, he wanted, Travis wanted to do a triple flip and he just created this monster of a, a takeoff ramp and a steep monster landing that he's hoping he could just if something would happen he could slide out of it oh so yeah because he, it'd be so steep yeah so I, i'm sure i saw a little bit of footage but he, he tweaked his knee and figured that it was just you know it's just hard you need something safe to practice so that end of 14 was when we went out there to trial a ramp <laughs> it was just this monster that ramp. big red was, thing yeah um no it was uh, i think at the start of the um the, the triple flip doco it shows our reaction when we first saw it like a 10 meter high ramp you know, it might not have been quite 10 at that point but ridiculous and there was an airbag behind just a flat airbag um <clears throat> and it was just we wanted to just to see what was possible and you know, what we needed to do to obviously we wanted a triple flip done but it was a bit of an experimental thing just to see what we could do and um ramp wasn't steep enough you know it was a, a lot of funny little stories in there about rock paper scissors and I lost rock, paper, scissors the first day, so I had to test the first ramp. And we're stepping back, and it's like, takeoff ramp. It's like, oh, I reckon about third gear might, you know. Oh, <laughs> no. Nah. There, that's physics behind it. And <sighs> if that's the edge of the airbag and the ramp's here, I jumped, and it was so steep, I was just air wheelie, bone wheelie the whole way. And my back wheel landed right on the edge of the bag, kind of took most of the speed out, and then the front wheel dropped down and hit the dirt, and I've fallen forward and like, Oh. Throat chopped myself on the handlebars, so um, got lucky. But we straight away had to steepen that up, and then so I think we had two weeks there, just had to steepen it up, steepen it up. You know, a few mods to even get some height, but we couldn't get any rotation. And um, Travis, um, we went home, and I know Travis put a lot more effort into changing ramp designs. I think we invited us back over early. Uh, Sorry, it's late thirteen it started, but it was all through fourteen, two thousand and fourteen when we were we going back and forth. So went over there for a, a week at some point and made a few changes and um uh you know, basically a couple of guys there were making a wood wooden ramp that they could easily modify. Old um Nate Wessel was just ripping things apart and changing it around and yeah, a few ramp designs. We didn't really get much closer, so Travis um went home, Travis would work on different ramp designs and then i think he got really close and um reckoned he had the right ramp so he got it made out of metal but do this and this and <laughs> so he got the ramp that worked got it made out of metal and then had and then do a couple it. of changes yeah. and we got out there and it didn't work and oh, he was pissed and we were a bit annoyed so we had to modify it again took a section off and it was just in the end it was like 17 ramp changes wow to find the one that um it's like mm, must have been around August, September, or something in 2014 when we finally nailed was, it. Yeah, we're getting two rotations on the way up, and I was just my technique was terrible. So Travis helped me a lot with that. What was wrong with your technique? Uh, just to do two rotations is one thing, but to to keep <clears throat> to keep yourself in the right position to keep the momentum going was the tough part. As I would, you'd we'd get two rotations say you'd be nose down at the top peak of the jump and, and then, then you'd kind of deaden out yeah and then like momentum changes like shifting direction it kind of upsets your balance and everything so um basically you had to um once the ramps once we hit the peak of the jump and started falling into that third rotation i had to kind of drop back into it lean into it and almost pull for another flip and that kind of you know helped keep the momentum going or almost felt like it sped it up and so travis helped me a lot with that with all his double flip experience over the years and and we finally got the triple flip done and um to, to the flat airbag so then it was exciting we were uh, we we're all loving it but also got scary then because we knew it was real like it was we had it was to do possible it. <clears throat> and it was gonna happen there's no way we were just not gonna let it happen so yeah i think he um then you know went on to bag jump went and made that uh as a lander bag about five foot thick which is oh, a, 
we've got some photos up here. Uh, Fuck, that is big, dude. What's it like to actually hit that ramp, like in terms of the forces that go through your body? <laughs> yeah, um, ask Trevor Jacobs. <laughs> no, he, uh, <laughs> he just did the old like fucking yeah. crumble. Yeah, so um, the ramp was there and, and Nitro was there. And um, I think we were filming some, I feel like we had, maybe we were doing a bit of filming just, I feel like we had free reign over the place. There was one point when we were making videos in teams of three and Trevor just wanted to go and backflip as many things as possible and, and we were doing a bit of, we were hitting this setup and he's like, oh, I want to want to hit it. <laughs> Travis is like, yeah, we've got a you know, KDM 300 for you and I think that's what it was. He just kind of just kind of left it up to him and he just underestimated the G-force mm. as, as it, you know, got into the belly of the ramp but we were hitting it at, it was 52 or 53 miles an hour at that point. But, wow. You know, 80. Uh, wow nearly 85 k's an hour and um yeah just heading into the ramp trevor's just foot leg sort of buckled a bit and he's just shot off the oh. side and that's that famous scene of him like ejecting and then there being one branch sticking out and he's just pushed off that branch and <laughs> pushed himself enough onto the airbag to land on the bag just yeah and bike landed off on the dirt and everyone was in shock <laughs> Fuck that psycho dude, but um eh? yeah so i mean there was a fair bit of force but yeah if you can anticipate it then yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. i had an idea of what you're in for you could you could cope with it um yeah and so that uh the landing basically click was, onto that one that third picture across yeah so that landing without the plywood on there is just a um scaff it might wow. not have, might not have had that that top section the top triangular you know 45 angle. fuck me so that um take the ply off it it's just uh like scaffolding yep scaffolding flat top and uh you know it's just a metal structure that, that comes that um i guess it's like walkway pathway that you can attach to the scaffolding yeah so it was just that structure and an airbag lander that was um draped over the top so um i'm sure there'd be some on there during training but it's um a five foot thick bag has all these nipples they call them that are folded down so you can land and it's like riding through boggy sand or boggy mud. Yeah, yeah. You almost have to lean back and wrestle it. But you, you could crash, you could throw your bike and land fine, but you could also land and ride out of it. What? Go yeah. to the YouTube video, Reigns. So, um, yeah. That, the, which so, one? That one, probably? That'd be just the dirt landing, right? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the sure. plot. Fuck, that's gnarly, bro. Um, oh yeah that's the airbag there right yeah click into that one <laughs> <laughs> top sheeny moments oh. here we go this is oh, what this is what we want to see dude that man you've done some crazy shit <laughs> how is the chops on you yeah I love that they come out every now and then why not eh go forward to watch some uh is that you on the back? Yeah, that was Nitro Circus. Um, That's over in Europe somewhere. Yeah, go back. Right. <laughs> You've got nine minutes of epic. Did you have to take the visor off your helmet? Oh, no, no I think it was. You see, that one, that was my first time I committed to go the back. third rotation. And if you can play the volume, <clears throat> if you can listen to it. See, my position, I was kind of. Go back again, Rance? tucked up oh the yeah bars. so yeah by that point i was crap myself and i was just trying oh. to look back and committed but that kind of ruled my rotation and um i didn't realize i drifted off to the right right but how know. hard is that impact on that bag the bag's not bad but i nearly missed it then i was so close to the edge that it um you know all the air pushes to the center and you, the outside just kind of collapses yeah crumbles yeah and i was just chest straight to the ground and was just started coughing up blood so really I was, I was wrecked for a couple of weeks after that really uh, yeah so i <coughs> filled up oh <laughs> dude yeah, that's a good angle. dude 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 that was my nearly died moment that is really gnarly yeah so my left my left shoulder wow was, dude ooh, my left shoulder was weak at that point about 
maybe 13. Oh, yeah, I think it was 13. So I, I'd um, fractured the vertebrae in my neck that... Um, Checks out that sound real quick, Ryan. Fractured a vertebrae in my neck, which just pinched the nerve coming oh, down my left arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there was just... It wasn't bad, but there were just so... Oh, <laughs> there were some movements that were weaker. And I know when I was really leaning off the back hard trying to give it to her, my right arm was obviously stronger and I'd drift to the right a bit. Yeah, yeah. And funnily enough, Travis was the opposite. So there were two lines going into the ramp. There was my line coming from the right side of the ramp, heading yeah. off to the left, and at the top of it was pulled to the right. And Travis's was the left to the right and because he'd drift left. It was weird how that worked out. But I obviously overcorrected um, when I did the actual triple flip because I nearly drove into the wall on the left-hand side after. Yeah, open that one, Rains. But that, um, yeah, back to the process, it was... We got the um, triple flip done, done to the flat bag. Uh, must have been late in the year. And then uh, come back, it was like the week before Christmas. I remember it was cold, icy, a bit of, um, oh, bit of snow frost. at one point, And then it would melt during the day. It was just horrible. So I was all geared up. And we uh, uh, had the scaff landing with the airbag, the five foot bag draped over it. And um, we we had cameras on the side of the, the flat airbag to work out where we were landing. So then they built this scaff landing in place. So I was going to land in the middle using the speed gun. So we were always, we were always hitting it with the, at the same speed. And so I just had to trust that just there was in. just this structure we were looking at. And I just had to trust that um, we'd get over and worked good. So then there was a few jumps to build up to it. And then we landed, la I landed the um, first, triple rode out of the first triple flip to an airbag and uh first one i kind of got caught up and crashed getting off it so <clears throat> and so that oh. you're just doing like speed check um, runs yeah I, I was probably in a bit of stress at that point and yeah so like <laughs> mentally how do you feel on a day where you know that like can you sleep the night before you commit to something like this Poor. um i i did but so uh, a <laughs> few influencing factors there. So one thing being um, like I was, each jump, I'd treat it like it was the, to the airbag. I'd always treat it like it was the one. So I'd always just try and, you know, be well warmed up and just try and put myself under the pressure. Like it, there's never that much pressure when you go into a bag, but the, the week leading up to it, when it's like I had five or six days to, to practice. So I'd, bit of pressure yep but i just you know want to make sure i do a number of them in a row without error so i knew that there was a very good chance of landing it and um i think having a about eight mates or something flew over there and um we're hanging around and yeah a couple of mates like some twins and a good blokes that just that love a love a beer and a good time they work hard but they they just love a laugh so they're helping helping everyone get stuff done but just making me feel at home, more relaxed, just easing the nerves with some laughs. So they helped out a lot. Um, thankfully, they flew over for it. But um, each day did get more and more stressful. And like by, say, f four five days of practicing triples to the airbag landing, I started to think, gee, what what happens if I stuff one up now? Like, what's that going to do to my confidence? Yeah. Like, no, no, it just... just yeah. <laughs> So like stress definitely build up. It was got harder and harder. I'd do one in the morning, like give it a few hours, go out, really? like I'm doing another one, do one, and they'd work. But the one thing that did give me a bit of confidence was knowing that once we did remove the airbag, because it was I think 55 degree landing, and the airbag's five foot thick at that angle, you know, it was a couple of meters at least extra drop. So I knew that when I you'd have a bit more move the bag, yeah, there was an extra just that bit of time that if I was and like. It's so steep that if I was so far under, like it would be scary, but you, you'd you'd get away with a, a nose heavy landing. So, thankfully, the the morning of um, on takeoff, as soon as I left the ramp, I just my feet kind of did the usual slide back and kind of locked into the the side plastics on the back, and I just I had really aggressive grip tape, and when my boots were locked up to that, I could tuck myself in and hold in a good position, and I just. First few felt great, so then that third one, I was in, already in a good position, and I knew I could just sort of 
relax coming into the landing. It was oh, unexplainable feeling after that. Really? Yeah, the, the weight off my shoulders, the the stress that was building up. I think I only lost about half hour sleep on the night before. Just I was up a little bit earlier. I was starting to get a starting to get a little bit of a snotty nose, a bit of a flu. A few people had the cold and I just hold it off, you know, be strong, you know. <laughs> and then that day it all just hit me, like just the relief and oh, a bit of a... Because it happened, we were finished before midday. It must have been late morning that we got it done. So I had all day just to relax and, yeah, and then the flu hit me the next day. I was hungover, oh, no. obviously. and <laughs> But on a high for a couple of days, for you know, a good week after that, it was just oh, amazing, really. I just wish i wish i could share that feeling with so many people but that this yeah just <laughs> just can't if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang <laughs>